Hello, hello. Hey, it's Trace Waters here. And we are looking at a 50 watt LED driver I got off eBay. I won it on an auction. It cost $8.05 with free shipping. And it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I just saw it and bid on it. And here it is. So I want to see what it's all about. I've got other drivers but this was less expensive. Now if we look over here I've got a voltage boost converter although it's not going to be used in that function it's going to be used to measure voltage in our current to make sure we are not exceeding our parameters for our LED which max 4 currents 1750 1750 milliamps and 36 on the voltage we want to make sure we're not going over that now in the spec sheet for the driver here it said 1700 milliamps and 34 I believe on the voltage so it should work out all great and happy together now if you look at this LED it's mounted on this this large heat sink here which is an old IBM computer heat sink and beneath it has a 12 volt fan pretty heavy duty overkill I'm thinking for this 50 watt LED but since I have it and I have the battery why not use it actually what I have in mind is I have a 100 watt LED coming and I think that fan will definitely come in handy for that from what I've heard those 100 waters get pretty toasty so we'll want to dissipate that heat the best we can. I'll also be making a video where I'm going to be tapping holes to put screws in to mount the, the LED permanently on the heat sink. And that'll be hopefully coming up soon. Whenever that whenever I get that LED in the mail, I'll make the video. But let's fire it up. See what it can do. Now with this boost converter like I said it's not going to be used to boost anything I'm just using it for the function for the uh, to see what the voltage passing through is and as well as the current now there I'm doing it where I can get the answer I want I'm not sure it's the right way in fact I'm pretty sure it's the wrong way because it seems to make things kind of angry and you'll see it here when I do it my way there actually where I even saw this video this um, boost converter in the first place there's a guy named Julian Illett he's a British dude and he has tons of electronic stuff and I've learned a lot from him and he has a specific video just dealing with this this specific model of boost converter and I should probably go back and watch it since I've forgotten most of it he also has a, a lot of other cool stuff and I, I advise going to check out his channel okay Sure, got everything set up. Let's turn on our fan. You'll definitely hear it running. And then we're going to fire up the driver. Okay. So it definitely works. But we want to make sure we're not getting too much current or too much voltage now, obviously there's other ways to measure this but this since this was lying around I thought I'd, I would try it this way so let's take a look here we see it's at 31.25 volts that's the setting but that is not correct it's actually below what this driver is putting out and the way this this boost converter and, and Julian Illett goes over this it cannot actually put out less power or well I should say I'm not sure that's turned right less voltage than what's going into it Okay, so that's how we're going to know that um, what what's actually passing through. So I'm just going to click this button real quick, and you, you see how it kind of got mad, but it showed 31.2. So 31.2 volts. Now I'm going to hit it twice really quick to to get the current. Okay, so you saw 1.43 on the amperage. So pretty ideal for running this LED well within its parameters I don't feel any excess heat coming off of anything in fact I don't even 
feel any warm air coming off this heat sink. I, I feel it's pretty warm putting my hand right in front of the light. But I think this heat sink's just fine on its own without the fan. But hey, it's there, so we'll use it. All right, if you are new at this, and you don't know what you're doing like me, actually, I've only been doing this for a couple weeks now, this, this is dangerous. This, this can hurt you, this setup. If you don't have basic electronic knowledge, do not attempt to do this. I can, however, recommend a couple different places to go on YouTube to get some knowledge where I went. There's, of course, Julian Illett, which I, I really like his stuff. And but for basic electronics tutorial that's extremely well put together and has helped me a lot is I don't I forget his name but he it's MJ Lorton and he has a whole series on basic electronics and that's where you want to get started. He makes it very well done and easy to understand. These these difficult concepts to understand he does a very excellent job and it, and it helped me out immensely and I had very little experience I had taken a small class in high school many many years ago and all we did was it built a power supply and I'd forgotten most of it so I, I've come a long ways in a short time because of those two gentlemen's efforts in putting the videos together so I'm appreciative of that that being said if you do get something out of this uh, you can thumbs up it, that helps me, and subscribe. I have a lot of different interests, a lot of different areas. Obviously, I'm no electronics whiz at all. What I'm trying to do is figure out enough to make myself dangerous, basically. Now, um, I want these LEDs for growing plants. And no, not the kind you can smoke, but the kind you can eat, like broccoli. Or cauliflower or something actually I don't want like cauliflower too much but I want to be able to grow indoors and you know it's just it's playing around for me a lot of it right now and uh, I'll have more videos to come on LED stuff as I get an idea what's going to work best for me because like I said I'm going to have a hydroponic system set up and I want uh, I want them to all come together and I'll be doing hydroponics videos here shortly as well so Anyways, subscribe, thumbs up, go check out Julian Illa and MJ Lorton, and come back and see me soon. Appreciate it. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.